Hey everybody, this is Matt from MasterSketchup.com and I created this video for people who are brand new to SketchUp or for those who have tried it before and are thinking about giving it a second shot. So by the end of this video, I hope that you'll be able to create your first model in SketchUp. So this is the welcome screen that you're going to see when you first open SketchUp. Um, they've got a couple of links here to help you get started if you want to dig through some of these and usually they have like a featured uh, article uh, link here but what you're gonna have to do is choose a template so you click choose template and they have a bunch of preset templates based on what you what you want to do I personally like using the architectural design feet and inches so let's just click that and start using SketchUp so this is your interface and by default there's a person uh, that's that gets placed a little bit off center here and you're gonna probably want to delete her right away so you click the select tool and you just click once to select her and hit delete on your keyboard so one thing I recommend for people who are just getting started with SketchUp is to go to the window menu and hit instructor and what that does is it pops up this window and it'll tell you what whatever tool that you have currently selected it'll kind of give you a little uh, animation of what it does and give you some descriptions on uh, the different options that you can do with those tools with some links for advanced operations uh, it's it gives you a lot of information and it and it's really great for for people just starting out so I recommend having that that open uh, but I'm gonna close it out here just so we have more viewing area so let's go ahead and select the rectangle tool and just for now let's just hover your mouse over uh, the intersection of the axes and you can see there's a yellow dot that appears and what that is is the SketchUp inference system uh, snapping to the axes and if you drag your mouse up it turns red and kind of runs along the, the blue axis you know as long as you keep your mouse relatively close to the axis if you go too far out it disappears but you know when you get into the vicinity of something that SketchUp can snap to it's gonna snap to it you can see here we're on the green axis and over here you can snap to the red axis so it, it does that for you to help you be more precise when you're modeling and and it's very helpful it's something that you'll you'll find you'll use a lot so let's go ahead back to the origin and click once to start the move and then just drag your mouse out you don't have to hold down your mouse button you just click once let go and then that starts the the activation of the tool or the execution of the tool so as you drag your your mouse out look at the bottom corner here you can see there's a window that tells you uh, the dimensions of whatever you're cur currently drawing so the great thing about SketchUp is you can be as precise as you want or you can be as rough as you want. So if I wanted to just drag out here um, to, to end the execution of the rectangle, you just click the left mouse button again and SketchUp draws the rectangle for you. And you can see we landed at you know some arbitrary number, 14 feet, 3 and 3, 13 sixteenths of an inch wide by 9 feet, 4 and 3 quarters uh, long or wh whichever way you want to think of it but um, if you wanted to define a specific dimension you can just type it into your keyboard uh, either before you finish the action or right after you finish the action so in this case we just finished the action of creating the rectangle and we can type in let's say 15 feet comma uh, 10 feet and then press enter and you can see that the rectangle jogged out just a little bit uh, since we were kind of close and uh, so now this measurement from here to here is 10 feet and this is 15 feet now if you change your mind uh, you can always you can continue to type in dimensions and press enter as many times as you want um, so like let's say we wanted to go 4 feet by 5 feet press enter it resizes so I'm gonna just go back to the 15 feet comma 10 feet um, so you can do that as many times as you want until you start another action so if I started another rectangle over here 
now if I typed in uh, some dimensions it's gonna go to that box that I just created not the original one but that's okay because that's not the only way you can change the size of uh, a shape. With the move tool, you can move anything in SketchUp. This rectangle, for instance, is made up of four edges, four points. You can see we snapped right to these endpoints, and a face. So, right in the center here, you can see that whole area got shaded. So if we wanted to move this edge, we just hover over it till it turns blue. And then we can click once to activate the move. And you can see the inference system here um, locking it into the red axis. So it's staying parallel with that red axis. And you can do the same thing with the blue axis by you know, moving the mouse up and down and the green axis as well. And you'll notice how Whatever's selected does not uh, change size or pro proportion or uh, everything else that's connected to it does. So in order for the selected um, object to stay the same shape and for everything else to stay connected to it, everything else has to kind of scale around and move. And that's important to remember that things that are touching each other in SketchUp tend to stick to one another unless, it, unless they're isolated on a group or a component. Now, I, I don't want to get into groups and components too much right now, but they're probably the, the most important concept to understand in SketchUp. Now, notice again how the window down here tells us how far away we're moving from the origin where we started the move. So we could go along the red axis, click, and type in four feet, and it'll automatically adjust to be four feet from where we started the move. Now you can you can move anything with the move tool. If we hovered over the face, we could click on it, and you can see the whole rectangle moved. And that's because all the edges are connected to the face. So in order for the face to move, the edges have to go with it. But another great feature of the move tool is the ability to make copies. So if we, while we have this move activated, we can just hit control and that tells SketchUp that we want to make a copy, not move the original one. So we can just lock to the blue axis, come up here and click again and we'll define five feet. That'll be the height that we want that to be at. So the next tool we'll use is the line tool. This tool creates edges in SketchUp. So we can just start right here at this endpoint, bring it down to this endpoint. And you can see that it thinks we want to keep drawing, but you can just hit escape on your keyboard and that'll cancel that out. And then we'll create another one here. And whenever you have more than two edges that are on the same plane, that are connected, SketchUp will automatically create a face in between those. And we'll create another one back here. And you can see the same thing happen. Now, in order to get to the back of the box, we're going to have to orbit the camera around the box in order to get a better perspective. So these are your camera tools up here. And primarily, you'll use the orbit tool and the zoom tool to navigate in your model. But instead of clicking these buttons up here, just click and hold the middle mouse button and then drag the mouse and you can see how it orbits the camera around to the other side and the thing that's really nice about using the mouse button instead of clicking actually clicking these tool buttons is let's say so we have the the line tool selected right now let's say we started uh, let's go ahead and start this this final line and let's say we wanted to get uh, a better perspective. We can actually come out here, click the middle bu mouse button, and you can see it changed to the orbit tool. We can orbit around here, and when we let go, the line tool it comes right back to us, uh, ready to to go from where we left off. And then we can come down here and finish the the line 
execution. The other thing you can do is using the scroll wheel on your mouse you can zoom in and out. So that with conjunction uh, with the uh, in conjunction with the orbit tool you can pretty much get to wherever you want to go. So wherever you point your mouse and scroll is going to be the center point from where the the zoom happens. And then you can orbit around and kind of zoom into any any spot you want. So let's orbit to the underside of this box. Grab the select tool. We'll select this face and then grab the move tool. Now when you pre-select something and then you go to the move tool you don't have to hover over it or grab one of the edges of whatever you have selected in order to move it. You can actually reference any point in your model. Um, you can even reference somewhere arbitrary out here but it's always good to reference you know a, a, a concrete point in your model whenever you're moving or or you know trying to guide something so uh, just to show you let's let's come up here to this point and click once to start the move and you can see it it starts to skew the box um, what we what we're actually trying to do is make a copy so we'll just hit control so that makes a copy and you can see we're on the red axis so we'll come out here and click to finish and type in 15 feet enter and you can see that we didn't have to actually click on this shape in order to get it to move as long as you pre-select um, objects that you want to move you can reference any point in your model so this box took us you know quite a bit of time to create and there's actually a tool that makes it a lot easier and that's the the push-pull tool so you can use the push-pull tool on any face so we just click and then drag up and you can see it automatically creates the the four edges and um, makes the the face into a 3d object and you can drag your mouse out anywhere and reference any point for the height so let's make it the same height as this box so we can just go to you know sometimes you can grab the face if you move around it thinks you're trying to do something else um, I like to try to hit points um, just to make sure I don't screw it up so so I reference that point and you can see that it, it uh, pulled that box up to the same height as the other one you can also use the push-pull tool to manipulate existing faces but the only thing you have to be careful of is if you have a face already selected like let's say I wanted to push uh, or pull on this face um, since this one's pre-selected if I click it, it's gonna automatically go to the one I have selected so I'll hit escape so let me show you that again if this was selected and I had the push-pull tool um, I can just hit escape and that'll clear out this selection and allow me to just hover over the faces to to make my push pull and you can manipulate these any way you want and you can define the distance that it goes um, in the the box down there as well so the last tool I want to show you is the tape measure tool and you can also think of this as a guide placement tool so first of all let's say you wanted to measure the distance between these two points so you can click to start on the point and you just drag out and it'll snap to uh, points and edges you can see we have 11 feet you could measure diagonally if you wanted to or the height 5 feet okay and I'll just I'll hit escape to cancel that out and the other the cool thing about this is like I said to create a guide so to make a guide you have to start from an edge so make sure the dot is red and you click to start and then you drag out so you could drag out to the midpoint the blue circle whenever you see a blue circle that means you're um, at the midpoint between uh, two points so we could go to the midpoint we could go out here if we wanted to measure the distance to the to the beginning of the next box 
or we could measure the total distance there. So we'll just we'll just go to the the midpoint there. So now that we have that guide in place, we can let's say we want to move this box. We can click the select tool, and to select this whole box, we could do a couple of things. We could uh, hold down the left mouse button to create a selection box, or if we wanted to, we could triple click. By triple clicking, it'll select all connecting faces and edges. So from that, we can grab the move tool and let's say we want this to grab the midpoint and we can drag it over here and we're we locked right onto that that guide and you can click to finish that. So now you can see our midpoints are in line with each other. Now it looks like these boxes are not exactly the same size. So if we wanted to fix that, for whatever reason we're making two identical boxes, we can grab the push-pull tool and select this face and pull it out, reference this face over here. So now those will be in the same line. And then we can do the same thing over here. We can select this, drag it over, and now this one will be in the same line as the other box. And then if we wanted to define a uh, absolute distance between the two, we could drag a guide out here and then define four feet, enter, and then triple click this again, grab the move tool, click that corner, and snap over here. So now we can measure this and you can see we got four feet. So using these basic tools, the line tool, rectangle, the tape measure, the push-pull tool, and the move tool, you can really do a lot in SketchUp. The next video, I'm going to go over groups and components, and that's going to show you how to keep your model organized and protect the geometry from one another. That way, when you change one thing, it's not going to affect all the other parts in your model, which is really good and really important. And if you'd like to learn more about SketchUp, visit mastersketchup.com.